In this video, we'll look at the classification and nomenclature of alcohols. So here I have my generic alcohol up at the top, and I have an alkyl group over here on the left, and I have an OH on the right, which is called a hydroxyl group. Let's look at the classification of our alcohol. So if I have a carbon bonded to an OH, and that carbon is bonded to one other carbon in this alkyl group here, that's said to be a primary alcohol. This carbon over here is bonded to two carbons in those two alkyl groups, so it is therefore a secondary alcohol. And then this carbon over here on the right is bonded to three other carbons, so therefore it is said to be a tertiary alcohol. Let's take a look at the nomenclature uh, of alcohols, and we'll start with uh, some real simple molecules here. So if I had a molecule that looked like that, and I wanted to name it using IUPAC nomenclature, I want to number my carbon chain to give that OH the lowest number possible. So therefore, this carbon would get a number one, this carbon would get a number two, and this carbon would get a number three. Now, if that OH weren't there, then we would then we'd have just have a three carbon alkane, which we would call propane. Uh, but since we have uh, our OH there, this is actually an alcohol. An alcohol is going to have the OL ending, so this is called propanol. So let's go ahead and write propanol here. So propanol. And the OH group uh, is coming off of carbon 1, so we're going to say that's 1-propanol like that. How would we classify this alcohol? Well, the carbon, the carbon right here that is bonded to the OH, that carbon is bonded to one other carbon right here. So this would be a primary alcohol. So 1-propanol is a primary alcohol in terms of its classification. Let's look at a similar looking molecule. All right, still three carbons, but this time we put the OH on the carbon in the middle there. So once again, you're going to go ahead and number it. Right? So this is carbon 1, this is carbon 2, this is carbon 3. This is a three carbon alcohol, so it's also called propanol. The difference is the hydroxyl group is on a different carbon, right? It's now on carbon 2. So we're going to go ahead and write 2-propanol here, which is the IUPAC name. Uh, this is also called isopropanol, rubbing alcohol. It's all the same stuff. But 2-propanol would be, would be the proper IUPAC nomenclature. How would you classify 2-propanol? All right, so once again, we find the carbon attached to the OH. That's this one. How many carbons is that carbon attached to? It's attached to one and two other carbons. So therefore, this is a secondary alcohol. So we have an example of a primary alcohol, an example of a secondary alcohol here. Let's do a little bit more complicated nomenclature question. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and draw out a larger molecule with more substituents. So let's put an OH here, and let's do something like that, and then let's let's go ahead and do that as well. So give the full IUPAC name for this molecule. Okay, so you want to find the longest carbon chain that includes the OH. Okay, so you have to find the longest carbon chain that includes the OH, and you want to give the OH the lowest number possible. So that's going to mean that you're going to start over here and make this carbon number one, like that. So if that's carbon number one, this must be carbon number two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we have a seven carbon alcohol. So seven carbon alcohol would be heptanol. So we can go ahead and start naming this. Make sure to give us plenty of space here. So we have heptanol. And we know that the OH is coming off of carbon two. So we can go ahead and write two heptanol like that. Let's look at the other substituents that we have. Well, what do we have, what do we have right here coming off of our ring? That's a three carbon alkyl group. Right? So that would be propyl. So we have three propyl. So we'll go ahead and write three propyl in here, like that. And what else do we have? At carbon five, we have two substituents, all right? So we have uh, we have a chloro group right here, and we have a methyl group right here. And remember your alphabet, right? So C comes before M. So we can go ahead and uh, and put our methyl in there, all right? Coming off of carbon five, so it'd be five methyl, like that. And then also coming off five, we have chloro, so five chloro right in here. And that should do it. Everything follows the alphabet rules. We have five chloro, five methyl, three propyl, two heptanol for this molecule. 
What about a problem that includes some stereochemistry? All right, so, so let's say they give us one where we have to worry about stereochemistry. So let's go ahead and draw another chain out here. So let's see, something like that. And let's, let's make an OH group going away from us. And then let's go ahead and make this one coming out at us like that. OK, so give the full IUPAC name for this molecule. And you have to include stereochemistry. So once again, find your longest carbon chain that includes your OH group. And you want to give that OH the lowest number possible. So it takes precedence over things like alkyl groups and, and halogens and, and, and double bonds. So we're going to start from the left. So one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. So we have a nine carbon alcohol, so that'd be nonanol, and the alcohol is coming off of carbon three. The OH is coming off of carbon three, so we have three, three nonanol, like that. So three nonanol. And let's see, what's our other substituent? Well, at carbon six, right, so at carbon six here, we have a two carbon substituent. So that would be an ethyl group. So let's go ahead and put in our six ethyl. So we have six ethyl. Let's go ahead and put that dash in there. So, so far we have six ethyl, three nonanol. And we have to worry about, uh, we have to worry about stereochemistry, right? So if they put in wedges and dashes on the problem, you need to, you need to think about stereochemistry. And you put those absolute configurations at, at the beginning of, of the IUPAC name. So let's, let's figure out the stereochemistry at carbon three, first of all, all right? So the stereochemistry at carbon three. So this is our chirality center right here, this carbon. And again, you, you go to the atoms that are directly connected to your chirality center. So that's carbon, carbon, oxygen. And then we also have, right, coming off our chirality center, we also have a hydrogen, which is coming out at us like that. So that would be the, the, the lowest priority. So that, that would get a number four here. So the oxygen has the highest atomic number, right? So that's going to get a number one. And then we have longer chain over here for this carbon on the right. So that's going to get a number two. And then we have a number three. And then the hydrogen would be a number four. So there's a little trick that I covered in an earlier video, right? So it looks, if you ignore the hydrogen, it looks like you're going around this way. It looks like you're going around counterclockwise. So it looks like it's S. But uh, but you have you have this lowest priority group is actually coming out at you. So remember, the trick was, if it looks like it's S with those three, uh, just reverse it. And so it must be R. It must have an absolute configuration of R at carbon three. So we'll go ahead and put in here a three R. And, and then we have to worry about the absolute configuration at carbon six. So at carbon six here, all right, so this is another chirality center, right? Four different substituents attached to it. There's also a hydrogen attached to this carbon going away from us like that. And let's think about uh, highest priority. Well, this, this chain over here on the left, right, this, this, this chain is going to get highest priority. It has the most carbons, has an oxygen over here, so that's definitely going to be highest priority. Uh, there are more carbons than this one over here on the right, so again, when you assign priority, this is going to get highest one, and then this is going to get a third up here. So this time, you're going around one, two, three. You're going around counterclockwise, but your lowest priority group your lowest priority group, which is this hydrogen back here, is going away from you. So this actually is going to be S. So it's counterclockwise, so it's S. So 3R, 6S. And I went through those kind of fast, so you need to go back and watch some of the earlier videos on absolute configurations uh, if, if that was a little bit too fast for you. All right, let's look at, um, let's look at uh, cyclic alcohol, so uh, ring systems. All right, so let's uh, let's look at an alcohol with six carbons in a ring, and then there's an OH coming off of it like that. So uh, six carbons without the OH, we would call that cyclohexane. And since this is an alcohol, we would just change that to cyclohexanol. All right, so it's a very simple nomenclature, cyclohexanol. Like that, you don't really need a number, uh, but if you, it, but you could write a one there. It's implied if you don't put it in. So that would be cyclohexanol. What about something that has? Um, how about a ring system with two hydroxyl groups? So let's let's say we'll put in some stereochemistry too. So let's say we have an OH coming out at us, and then let's say we have an OH going away from us like that. All right. So when you have a situation like this.
When you have uh, two alcohols in the same molecule, right, your prefix would be di, so this is actually a diol. And the nomenclature, it's based off the cyclohexane molecule, so you would write cyclohexane. And then right after the cyclohexane is where you put the diol, so di meaning two, two alcohols. You have to specify where those two alcohols are on the ring, so we need to go ahead and number our ring. Let's say this is carbon one, right, that would make this carbon two, carbon three, and then carbon four. So we have alcohols at the one and four positions, so we'll go ahead and write one and four here. And those two alcohols are trans to each other, right? One's, one's coming out at you and one is going away from you. So you could go ahead and write, you could go ahead and write trans one, four, cyclohexane diol, and that's a good IUPAC name. Okay, so other, other types of alcohols, well, we could have, uh, we could have, right, instead of, a, instead of a cyclohexane ring, we could have an alcohol based on, off of a benzene ring, right, so we put in our pi bonds like that, and if we have an OH here, right, it's a special type of alcohol called a phenol, right, so this is a, this molecule is called phenol, and also you'll, you'll, you'll see this, uh, you, you'll see this hydroxybenzene uh, portion of a molecule in, in lots of natural products. So this is actually a, a very important uh, molecule to recognize the phenols. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and put something on that ring. All right, so let's go ahead and we have our phenol as our base here, and let's go ahead and put let's put a, a bromine right here. So how would we name that molecule? Well, the base part of the molecule is the phenol molecule. So we'll go ahead and put phenol like that. And then we'll go ahead and number it, right? So the OH, right? This must be carbon 1. And we want to give our substituent the lowest number possible. So we're going to give this uh this carbon number 2. So we have a bromine coming off of carbon number 2. So it's very simple. All you have to do is write 2 bromo. So we have 2 bromophenol like that. So so that's that's nomenclature for alcohols and a special type of alcohol called a phenol.